Good afternoon. Wendy Olson here. I'm a professor at University of Manchester. I'm going to run through a PowerPoint presentation for you on the deaths from COVID in India during the first wave in 2020. I'll do it fairly quickly and you can easily slow down the viewing or you can speed it up to get to the technical part in the middle or the conclusions at the end. And there are maps of the ge geography of the distribution and spread of those deaths. So let me share my screen with you. We're hoping for about a 10 minute to 15 minute presentation. But previously we presented this taking 45 minutes, so I will go quite quickly. The paper has been published in the European Journal of Development Research, EJDR. The title is Hierarchical Modeling of COVID-19 Death Risk in India in the Early Phase of the Pandemic. And I'm so grateful to all the co-authors who've worked as an amazing team, but I will move on fairly quickly to continue our presentation. We acknowledge the funding of Global Challenges Research Fund, the GCRF, and our project group was slightly different from the authors on this paper. Thanks especially to Kriti Arora, Clelia Cascella, and others. Rohini, uh, who've helped us. The structure of the talk is I begin with introductions and the hypotheses that we were testing. And there was a lot of support for some hypotheses, but surprising findings on others. So I've annotated the slides to indicate what happened. And then we have a more technical session on data and variables and results and how we interpret the special modeling that we did. It was Bayesian posterior distributions for each parameter in a model that used two or three different data sets in combination. But that's the technical part. <laughs> Here's some of the findings. So the cumulative cases of COVID-19 in 2020 were spread very differentially across the country. Top left is April. Top right is May, then we go down to bottom left, and finally at the right on the bottom is August of 2020, which nearly accounts for all or most of the deaths during that wave. And you can see in the purple the very high densities in some of the states like Maharashtra and perhaps Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh. And it is not the case that there was a cluster near Calcutta. It looks black, but it's because of a bunch of boundaries rather than being because of COVID deaths. That distribution of, sorry, cases is now shown here as a, as a distribution of deaths. And our data was from each district, but sadly those data didn't give age and sex of those who died. So we can see the Maharashtra cluster, again with August at the bottom right. And we see a few other districts in yellow, which sadly had experienced deaths. And it's a kind of gradual spread of the disease across this terrain. This terrain is nearly twice as large as Europe in the sense of the European Union. The risks are also shown here as an output from our model. So the model takes the death outcome, works up an XY relationship, and then forecasts the risk for each person in each district. And summing those up, the districts have risks. And here that's summarized at the state level. So you can clearly see Maharashtra with its very high prevalence had a high risk at the time of writing. The paper was published in December of 2020, so it's now getting dated, but the method is what's really special. For 11 states, we have some of the specific areas at district level. Now, a district in India would have around a million people, sometimes half, or three, half a million or three million, and so to have 110 deaths is still quite a low ratio of deaths to population, which we were very happy about during the pandemic in that stage. And India actually appeared to have a lower frequency of COVID and frequency of deaths than many other countries at that time. But you can see also that it's very unequally distributed and Mumbai with its big airports and ports was a really big cluster for both cases and deaths. Here again, we see the cases and deaths over time fitted onto a curve. The cumulative cases at the left and the deaths at the right. And again, the individual data points without the fitting. This one shows new cases in each period. The cumulative obviously would just be a sweeping upward curve and that's not so interesting, so. The first hypothesis was that urban area residents would be most likely to raise your risk of death. And there was a lot of evidence for this one. 
Secondly, those over age 65 had been dying in large numbers relative to the other age groups in the epidemic in China and in um, cruise ships and some of the other places where we had evidence. And there was evidence to support this. So in a way, this paper is controlling for those two factors, which are known factors, and then testing to see what else we could find out with the detailed data. But the detailed data didn't include the social group of those who had died in each district. It was just a count of how many had died in each district. So we had trouble testing the hypothesis about systemic structural discrimination against some social groups. The hypothesis would be that the SCs or the STs would have higher risks of death. And it's partly because of their um, long-term historical discrimination, which we hope has ended since it was illegal since about 1947 or 1950 in India's constitution. But because there is historic poverty and lack of assets in those groups, relative to other groups, um, we do find that they have a higher level of COVID deaths. And that, again, has been measured after controlling for age and urban and some of the other factors like wealth. Now, wealth was a very ambiguous result. So I've underlined our findings on wealth in that study from 2020. Wealth was associated with more deaths and with obesity. And obesity was associated very strongly with more deaths. So in a way, the wealth effect was much smaller while we had obesity, um, in this case, measured at the district level, the average level of obesity as a percentage of the people. And that is where I'm starting to hint at the hierarchical nature of our model. These hypotheses were not just about individuals, but they were also looked at in terms of district level characteristics. So the individual was measured in terms of their weight and body mass index, and then obesity rates using a cutoff of 30 BMI were averaged for districts as well. So we could then test whether obesity at the individual level seemed to be a marker for risk of death, or whether it was perhaps better to include that variable at the district level. And the district level was a much stronger precursor associated with high levels of deaths. So you can imagine from this, this underlined finding that we might find that the city of Mumbai might have both a high level of obesity and a high level of average wealth, and that both of those are associated with more deaths. But the wealth effect was much more ambiguous and tricky. And I think I'm more comfortable to state more clearly that obesity was associated with death uh, based on severe COVID. Finally, the health-related variables were also controlled for. So we made an index containing the diseases listed, heart disease, lung disease, uh, there was diabetes, and we also controlled for BMI. And the results shown at the top of this slide were um, after the health controls. So I think it's an important paper that you can do all that with, with a large data set for the whole Indian scene. It's not all in one data set. The COVID deaths are in one data set. And the overweight data is in the National Family Health Survey data set. And the urban percent was taken from a different data source. Some, some of our variables came from the Indian census of 2011. Uh, particularly those variables on migration had to be sourced to that because they weren't in the other data sets. And so the magic is in the technical part, telling how we could bring those data together. Um, but it is the case, it appears, that areas with good sanitation management and good health care had fewer COVID-19 deaths in that year. But it, it's all depending what you compare it to. Um, looking at Punjab, for example, in the various districts of the Punjab, you have really relatively very high levels of overweightness. Overweight is not the same as obesity. The cutoff level is lower on BMI. Please see the paper. Um, but these are high rates and the urban rates are also quite high. But sadly, um, there were deaths in the Punjab. And yet, if you look at the number of these deaths, this is an example of the data we were working with. So nationally, that number of deaths at the right was relatively a high number of deaths. And um, deaths like 110 or something in Mumbai was extreme. So you had extreme values. And then many, many districts had no deaths in 2020. So they had a lot of cases, as you can see here. So I'm just giving you that as a glimpse of the data. Now, I'm going to list our data sources very quickly. The deaths data came from... Uh, howindialives.com. It's uh, also known as the Joe data set, and it's a private 
firm, which is in a proprietary way, gathering up the data from different states and the national outlets. And the national outlets do, do give the same basic figures as Joe's, but it was more convenient to pick it up from, from this on a subscription. Uh, and eventually they gave data for free as well as a public service. So their data were sourced from health ministry websites, news articles, and they did do checks to make sure there wasn't double counting and they made some subtractions where they found that in a state or in a district there had been some double counting. So we have data in this slide presentation from June of 2020. We have later done the analysis on the August data um, right up to the end of August. Um, the results are similar. I do have some of those results here. The theoretical framework is shown in this figure with two levels. So the district level would be where inequality would be represented um, and pollution, but we haven't tested those factors yet. And then in the personal level, you would have uh, issues to do with personal histories, that is your lineage and social group history, as well as your personal characteristics like health, obesity, and underweight. And then the Bayesian inference is a way of deriving a parameter distribution for each of the parameters in the model. The parameter would typically be a slope where the risk of dying is the dependent variable. And the slopes are a way of measuring the impact of every independent variable. So the likelihood for this has a particular shape but doesn't completely dictate the results. So it's not a likelihood estimate per se. The likelihood is combined with some priors, which are very flat or weak priors here. And then the results are what we call the posterior based on the evidence and the prior. The posterior is a moderate parameter distribution in between. And then we usually take the mode or median. If you see the peak of that posterior that's green, uh, that would be the mode of it. We usually take the median actually in this paper as a scalar estimate of a parameter. And those are then graphed for you. So it will get easier if you're not familiar with these technicalities. But I've shown a picture here of Gelman, who's written a number of books and, and articles on using Bayesian methods and helpfully you know, brought whole decades of students and scholars on into using Bayesian methods with Markov chain Monte Carlo simulation. The basic idea is that you simulate as a computationally intense way of using the data over and over and over. And statistically, we can then prove that these parameter estimates are the same as those we would obtain under traditional methods, as long as the assumptions were all true in the traditional methods, but we haven't made the same assumptions. And so we can use multiple data sets to make estimates of a set of parameters. And here it's quite a wide set of about 30 regression parameters, um, as well as making estimates of the district death counts and individual death risk, apart from the data that we received. So, there's a lot of dependent variables and a lot of uh, estimation going on. The number of parameters was immense here and the machine would work very slowly. So I'm just telling you that to, to help people to realize how innovative this work is. It's certainly the first time it's been done in, in the COVID context. Although there are other Bayesian papers on COVID in India, which have used a sort of data science approach at district level. But this paper combines the district level with 345 districts with the individual level with 69,000 cases. And there are men and women in the data set. So equation one indicates the vulnerability of an individual. So it's a sort of individual risk equation. It's in logs just to allow curvature, get a good fit. And I've made a list of the X variables on this slide. Equation two shows an equation which helps with using the death data, which is provided only at the district level. We don't have individual death data. So J measures the districts and I measures the individuals and K will be measuring the individual variables, X. So if we look at that X list, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven X variables. There's also the Z variables, which only vary at the district level. And there are four of them. And we went through some tests to make sure we had the best choice of variables, including a variable for migration, because there was a lot of discussion around migration affecting the case risk for COVID, which then would feed into the death risk. Here we see death as D and the number of deaths is counted and that's usually then represented in a Poisson regression, where mu is the rate of risk and p is the population in that district. So those are my three equations. The parameters can be estimated. They appear here as a mean or scalar 
we can use medians. We get very similar results with the median because each parameter is estimated on a long scale, on a distribution. And now I want to turn to the results for a moment. Looking in red, we see some very large parameters. Over age 65 is in the 29s, 27s. It's 28.3 at the mean. Changing the model a little bit by adding the wealth indicator, it doesn't change much. So old, having a lot of old people was a risk factor. And urban is a much smaller factor in this model. And instead of that, obesity plays a role as a huge factor at the district level, hugely associated with death from COVID. So this, I think, has some policy implications, although you could substitute some other indicators that are also correlated with wealth, and they may turn out to be positively associated with the risk of death. We don't know. We haven't had time to test that. But we wanted to pull out pollution, and so our current work is on adding a pollution variable for each district to make sure that we're not completely misspecifying this model. The picture in the middle here shows that upward slope on obesity and the death risk the district level. And then we have observations at left and predictions at right. It's a good fit. The model is amazing. Um, and you can do that in a couple of hours now on a standard Windows PC. The top 20 districts are listed here. It looks similar to some of the results that I posted from the data. So the predictions spread are similar to the data, but have an error term. And you can see some of the very large errors for the extreme values. But if we go down into the zeros, they won't be extreme errors, not shown. The model with results up to August had similar results. Urban was a massive coefficient. Migration turned out massive. And obesity seemed to have shifted to be a negative or smaller, sorry, a much smaller associated factor. And we thought that that needed to be explained, but it wasn't in our published work. But comparing those two sets of results by looking at those little tiny parameter distributions, the estimate distributions are very tight. And these have all been standardized, by the way, these variables. Then we see that there's some extreme values combined with a set of reasonable values that are pretty much the same. So even when the model results change over time, the social structure seems to be feeding through gender, urban, SE, ST, smoking, they feed through into death risk anyway, as does over age 65. So the results I think are quite firm. This is another picture of the results, but I've used data on deaths up to December, 2020. And you can take your time interpreting those results. They're not very different from the original June results with district obesity being associated with more deaths in a district. And I would suggest that other scholars might look at the Gini coefficient as a measure of inequality, as well as pollution. This diagram just shows how the Bayesian results coalesce fairly quickly onto a sort of range of possible values. And that becomes the range which is depicted in the parameter distribution. And then we take the mean of that distribution, here that would be a horizontal line, as the best possible estimate for these data for that coefficient. But to get it down to a couple of hours estimation time, we have two chains instead of one. We can use three chains, four chains. We can use multiple cores in the computer and that speeds it up. So just to conclude and discuss the findings, the risk factors associated with severe COVID-19 include living in an urban area, belonging to a marginalized group, not including religious marginalized groups, by the way, but the SC and the ST groups in particular, having a smoking lifestyle, unhealthy conditions, especially obesity, and being in a certain district where the disease was having a, a really rapid rate of expansion. Our future work can look at growth curves with the same data, because we have obtained the data from Joe Data, how India lives over, over a quite a long time period now, periodically, not weekly, but every time they've revised the data, we get a set of data. So we do have panel data. And again, I'm giving the source of our death data, howindialives.com. I'd like to thank everybody that's helped produce the NFHS and the Indian Census and these uh, Joe data, because they're really amazing data sets. And we have references here, including particularly the, the report that we published. Uh, there was a preprint on Research Square, and there's not really been any comparable reports yet from India, but I hope under wave two that scholars will really quickly turn toward doing further estimates to help us to 
limit the number of deaths in the future. Thank you for listening. Please get in touch if you have questions.